welcome back. As promised, I have one Emmett Watkins Jr. from. It's so many. I mean, I let me get a, pa- a paper. We got BGU. We got we got the usual spoonful. We got etc. etc. Everything in the descriptions if you want to check it out. Emmett, first off, of course we're talking about the state of play today. But I, I want to really quick. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Um, I don't know. Just just starting the year off, trying to get all my vacations and plans for the whole year set mm-hmm. up. Uh, mm-hmm. It's looking like it's gonna be a fun year, a busy fucking year. But yeah, you yeah. know, a lot of interesting things that are coming up so i'm excited yes about it. yeah same i already have plans for things i'm going to atlanta soon for um mm-hmm. a beetle juice play um i mean there's many things plans for the year too i do the same thing the first first month of the year me and the wife are like all right what are we doing when you start saving up and all these things but we're nice. gonna talk about a state of play not vacations although I feel like Emmett, you're very good at the vacations. Well, maybe one day I'll I'll consult you for like mm. a good vacation plan or something. Surprise the wife. I don't know. I'll I'll say this: I got a lot of vacations in me, but as far as mm. things I'm actually doing, I'm doing two things that I'm trying to chill. I went back to school this year. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, my girl wants to take me to see her family in Barbados, and I also have a family reunion. Barbados, wow. and they're both right back to back months. So yeah, that's where yeah. I'm at. Well, we are talking about the state of play today. You have watched it. Uh, first off, let's do light overall thoughts and then we'll get into game by game. But what did you think of this state of state of play? They would have already have seen my thought, light, light thoughts on me. So I want to hear from you first. I think this state of play was better than the last PlayStation showcase. <laughs> I think that's unquestionable. Uh, but overall, did I think it was, I actually think it was pretty good. I think it was a solid, like B plus I'd say mm. maybe not the craziest thing of all okay. time. I think there were a lot of games in there that I cared about. There was nothing bad. I, I don't think there was a single stinker, a single boring moment in the entire showcase, but just a lot of things that I personally didn't find exciting, whether taste wise or just stuff that I'm already familiar with on other platforms. But overall, a, a very good show. Maybe not, you know, God tier, but very, very good. To, to kind of reiterate what I said, I enjoyed this actually quite a bit. And I, th- I didn't say that, but I do actually think I agree. The last showcase, um, on here, I, I said it as well. It pretty much missed for me. I thought it was actually very pretty bad. Uh, and then this state of play, I think, is near a showcase worthy in what we're talking about uh, in terms of quality and thing. I actually think they nailed this. And although the state of plays, usually how I describe them is just peaks and valleys, you really don't know what you're getting. You might get a good one. You might get contractually obligated state of play where it's clearly mm-hmm. that they needed to do this via contract of some, you know, and it doesn't really look great. But um, in this one, it actually looks good. Ignoring the fact that there isn't, we still don't know really what PlayStation is doing this year. I think that is a huge negative of the show. Um, mm. we still have no idea. They didn't tell us anything. They didn't hint at anything. We still don't know if they're even releasing a game this year, technically. Uh, so that is one negative. Uh, and I'm not counting ports. I know maybe someone's right there. It's like, well, yeah, until dawn. I was about to say, I got a rebuttal to that. Uh, yeah, I go do ahead. think besides the until dawns and the very obvious ports, I think this year, it seems pretty clear that this year, PlayStation is just leaning on their partners. It is yeah. all... They're yeah. really hammering home Final Fantasy. Yeah. yeah, you'll be able to play it on PC one day. But it is a PlayStation exclusive. Stellar Blade is a PlayStation exclusive. You know, That's these true. types of games is what they're banking on. I think this year was supposed to be their big games of service year. And so that didn't work. I from just from the last showcase, the the PlayStation showcase where it was all about the live service things, yeah. I think they looked at it in their heads as the next God of War, the next Last of Us, whatever. And we clearly didn't take it as that. So now we get to this year. And that's all they had in the chamber. Now they're going to have to lean on their partners and say, hey, Rise of Ronin is your big PlayStation exclusive. I'm glad you actually bring that up because I do feel that way. It does feel like they are like trying to almost be like, this is your PlayStation Studios title. Oh, you know, of course, not made by PlayStation, but this is this is kind of what you would expect, right? Rise of Ronin kind of looks like something we'd release. So like, like, hopefully that kind of keeps people attention away from this year, because I do think um, I think a good chance is we probably don't get a first party release this year. And it's all just, you know, your mm-hmm. second parties, your third party relations like Square with Final Fantasy Rebirth, which is huge. But 
it, at the end of the day, you, you just paid to keep it on your platform. So, um, but again, I want to reiterate state of play. I actually think was very good, especially if you judge them against other state of plays, because it really is just like, is this going to be good or not going flip? Let's see. You know, let's see. Um, hopefully they can try and keep this cadence and maybe do less state of plays and then try and yeah. keep around here. Cause uh, there was a point where it, I, it was clear there was too many and they didn't know how really to curate them. Um, but let's, uh, let's actually start with, Going game by game. That's kind of my favorite part of doing these. So they start off, um, I think, incredibly strongly with um, Stellar Blade. Now, they technically start, I know everyone, they started with Helldivers. It felt like a commercial. I have nothing yeah. really to add to this game. It was clearly like, remember, Helldivers is coming soon. Please buy it. And I saw it, and I was like, this looks awesome. But I just, I don't know. I don't know if I'll like it or not. I'll say Helldivers. Look, I like the original enough. Uh, the second one, I'm not really hyped for. I feel like I look at Helldivers 2, like everyone who hasn't played Gears of War looks at Gears of War. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and and it looks fine and it looks fun. And I'm sure I would enjoy it, but I'm not looking to play that. There's nothing original, new, unique about it that I'm like itching to get onto. But yeah. you know, when it's on PlayStation Plus in a year, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 100% with you on that. I'm probably just going to wait on that. I don't see the need really. And my February is chock full. It's, I don't, mm -hmm. I do not have time to to put another game in there. So, although I, glad Hellblade 2 for your help. Uh, Hellblade fans out there, or as uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know Divers. how many Hell Divers. Sorry, I don't know yeah. how many of you are out there, but there you go, Hell Divers too. Let's hope it's good. Um, moving on, <laughs> Stellar Blade. Uh, felt like it actually kicks off the show. This feels like yeah. okay, all right, let's see what this is. And um, I don't know about you, I loved pretty much everything I saw. Uh, and they, <laughs> they, they went very clear with um. Uh, how how should we say like uh, uh, showing off women's assets clearly throughout yeah. the entire trailer? Uh, Absolutely. Look at these boob physics. Look at this ass. It was a lot of that. Uh, mm -hmm. So much where I was like, okay, I, I get it. She's hot. Embarrassing. It felt a little bit. <laughs> it's, I get it. She's hot. Do it like twice and let's move on. But uh, it was good. You know, I loved it. Uh, it was I, it, I was actually when I, during my react. Um, I don't know if you all agree with this, but I was like, wow, it really feels like. Like a, like you're, you're making a stew and you're like, all right, a little bit of a little bit of near a little, mm -hmm. little bit, a little bit of Devil May Cry, a little bit, Bayonetta, a little bit, a little, little bit, little, you know, just kept adding a little bit. Death Stranding too. you know, it's just like little bits of other mm -hmm. games. And it seems like it culminated into this frankly it looks amazing i actually wasn't really excited for this and this completely sold me see i i was already here for it i i was i wasn't like completely sold but i was very much so looking forward to more information this is that information i was looking for it looks like it's gonna be a really good time you know kind of souls likey but also you know more stylish action combat like a devil may cry or a bayonetta yeah. um the thing about it is it, a couple things where this demo or however they want to call it definitely gave me like there's a certain like feeling or vibe from actually let me see wh where is this developer based out of um because i think that's going to answer the thing i'm trying to think of i, I off time i had i want to say korea um let me see i'm, I'm googling because it's shift up corporation yes uh i am looking up i see it, it, yeah i it might be a korean I'm i, I want to the text yeah yeah i want to say it, it's a korean based studio Yep, it is Seoul, Korea. Yeah, yeah, I thought, I thought so. There's a certain vibe I get from this game, yeah, a certain yeah. vibe I got from, what's that other game? What's the first person shooter that looked very tight and folly, but it was like two hours long, and it was on Xbox Game Pass. Go, go, bright go, bright go, Memory. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to say Ghost Runner for some reason. No, no, Bright Memory Infinite. Yeah, yeah, I always get those mixed vibe. up. Yep, exactly. And there's another game that I actually like quite a bit as well. And I also like Bright Memory Infinite as well. There's a game called Ultra Age that has this vibe as well, mm. where it feels very Unreal Engine tech demo-y. It does. Like, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it's like just shiny textures and really cool bombastic things. It's a game that looks really cool. I love games that look really cool. And it looks like it's going to be just as fun to match those cool visuals. I feel like I'm not going to care about any of these characters. I'm not going to care about any of the oh, story. I feel like I'm not yeah. going to care about any of this just because that's not what they're leading with. They're leading with these visuals. I am still sold on the game. I'm very excited to play it. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up day one, mm. less because the game doesn't look good, but more because I'm really trying to tighten my budget this year. So yeah. you really got to be 
topest of the tier if I'm going to spend money on you day one. But um, yeah, Stellar Blade. It looks really good. I am very, very much so itching to play it, but it definitely hit me. I'm like, man, this this has like a little generic like stank on it. But mm, I fuck with wow. that. I fuck with that a lot of time. So I will. I will have to say, I de- I definitely don't feel generic. I do understand where you are coming from, though. It does kind of feel like they really did kind of like look at the face, look mm-hmm. at the face. Isn't this good looking? Look at it, and they just kept, and they just kept like look at it, and like it's like hitting her face. Like, like exactly. I, I got it. Like I do think um, if we talk about the literal trailer itself and the pacing i think it was kind of wildly off although i dug what we were watching i was like who edited this and like no offense but like this is kind of a mess if you really kind of look at it through like a piece that you're trying to tell people um i want to quickly read because i don't i don't feel like they like really helped us along with like what the game actually is about so i want to read a little bit of this blog post stella blade follows the journey of eve a warrior who descends from an off-world colony to defeat the Nightibas, humanity's enemy that suddenly emerged on Earth. The Nightibas appear to be attacking the human race at the will of a higher entity composed of Alpha and an Elder. But no one Near. really knows. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, but no one really knows about their origin, which is a, w- a funny way of ending that sentence. Yeah. It's just it's just near automata again, but OK, <laughs> it, it does really. I mean, if it, it was like, wow, this is really near. I also very much like that she's wearing this incredibly skin tight suit and then just a tie, just a, just a tie, a green plaid tie on top of all they very. I don't know. None it's of the other K-pop. outfits had this. <laughs> it, it, honestly, it is very K-pop. It's like, let's put the girl on the co- in a tie because that's cute. I do want to say, um, if 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 I may, if you're watching this, the PlayStation blog has a very funny picture from the um, from the actual trailer. And it almost looks like every character in the picture is from a different game, especially the guy on the right. It looks like he's like (laughs) in a completely different universe. And this lady just walked up. So I again, the guy on the right looks like he's from Synced, the free to play shooter. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it, it, it looks very, very different. But um, I am excited for it. It does kind of feel like the game you'll play, you'll beat it and be like, that story was weird, but I had fun playing the game. So indeed, that's really all I have to add, I guess. Then, of course, there's already digital deluxes with. Are you... Oh, OK, that's I thought it was in-game currency. Oh, no, there is in-game currency. So you'll, you know, you'll be able well, to get cosmetics says... and all these things. It says SPX, SPXP. So I'm like, is that experience points that you're getting to just boost up your level? Or yeah, is and, there and in the digital deluxe at the bottom, it says 5,000 gold in-game currency. So I imagine there's a store in this game, which awesome. It, it makes sense why she has so many different outfits, because they're probably selling you half of them. Uh, she was almost in a different outfit in every scene, it felt like. Uh, so mm. makes sense, I guess, why, why they want to show that off. But I can't wait for Celebrate. Hopefully it... Uh, Holds up. Hopefully it is what, what we saw. Hopefully it's stellar. Uh, April 26th, <laughs> by the way, the day. Very soon. Very soon. Mm-hmm. Next, oh, yeah. uh, I don't care about this technically. I did uh, I did love Shadow as a kid. Gotta be honest. I did play a lot of Sonic games as a kid, but I have been completely gone from the series for a very, very long time. But they did show... Uh, I, I think the name for this is Sonic Cross Shadow Generations. And I'll read a little bit of the blog post so we kind of understand because I was very confused on what the game even was. So today we unveiled Sonic Cross Shadow Generations, the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog platformer delivering blistering platforming challenges at speeds only. Blah, blah, blah. It's a greatest hits playlist of iconic 2D and 3D Sonic levels from Sonic Generations, both remastered and expanded for PS5 and PS4. But that's not all. It also introduces a new all all new standalone campaign for Shadow the Hedgehog making this the definitive blend of classic, modern, and shadow gameplay. So it looks like you are getting Shonic Generations and then also a shadow campaign, but maybe you won't be able to play a shadow in the other stuff, because I thought at first you'd be like, oh, you'll be able to play a shadow during the Generations Mm. level, but it looks like it's just a campaign that's stitched on top of this game called Sonic Generations. Yeah, uh, I mean, it seems like they're when they say Sonic gameplay or when they say shadow gameplay, I'm assuming they mean Shadow the Hedgehog, the one where he holds a gun on the cover. Um, 
I'm interested to see how they translate that into this. <laughs> he has a Glock. Uh, yeah, oh my yeah, God. Me, me too. I um, I don't know. I assume this is, I mean, Sonic fans seem to like eat everything up. So I imagine this is wanted. I feel like we haven't had a, shot, a shadow thing in a very long time. So it is cool to see this again. I did play that PS2 game with it when he's holding literally just a gun on the cover. Like it was very weird, but I did play that. Uh, so we'll have to see. I want to see if it tells us anything about the actual shadow story. It doesn't look like it does. So it looks like we just know it's a shadow story. Doesn't really tell us anything about the actual campaign of the game, but get excited, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll say I'm not too much of a Sonic fan. I know Generations is one of the good ones, and I have played a little bit of it. I'm a little bit disappointed that it's cool that this came as a surprise, but without warning, they took off the original Sonic Generations from all of the digital stores. And that was a game that was still getting play. It's Steam Deck verified. It was updated, remastered with 4K and high frame rate on the Xbox. So it was still a very popular game or very. It was still popular enough to be getting sales now. So the fact that they just like kind of snuck it out, of, snuck it out and gave it a remaster. It's cool. I'm sure this will be good, but it seems less necessary considering the preservation efforts with it already. But yeah. for the sake of PlayStation, you couldn't have played it on a PlayStation until right now. So yeah, here you go. Good point, because uh, backwards compatibility and all that. Uh, moving mm -hmm. on, I have quite literally nothing to add to this game. Uh, it's made by Hoyovorus, same um, people as Genshin Impact. Uh, it is called Zenless Zone Zero, and it is coming to PS5. I understand this is going to be huge. Let's not hmm. mince words. I imagine this game will be massive, in same as Genshin Impact is, but uh, it, when I saw this, you know, I, I thought I was like, oh, this looks cool, but I think I'm good. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is something I'm going to care about. I'm trying to look through the uh, blog post here. If it's this not, is a free to play thing, then I'm not excited. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not. And also, it's not very clear what it is. Again, like if we read the, from the Von Flow, Zone Listen Zero, brand new urban fantasy action RPG by Hoyoverse. All right, you hear Hoyoverse, you're like, OK, so probably a free to play game. And no point does it say that in any of this is uh, from me quickly glancing from yeah as the but yeah talking about the playing experience yeah so n coming to ps5 this year no yeah nothing so i imagine it is i imagine it'll be some sort of genshin impact like game uh or they would i i, I assume i've said that at some point because it doesn't say single player doesn't say multiplayer so who knows yeah I'm a, oh my god all right i went to their official website music just blaring on the site like <laughs> oh <laughs> exactly uh yeah i'm looking through it i see no indication that this is a single player game if it's them making a single player game that interests me somewhat but even then i'm not usually into these more like anime style games so it wouldn't be super yeah. exciting for me but i will take this time to say i played the demo for grand blue fantasy relink oh that how game it? rules yeah that, it's really fucking good okay and Reviews came out. Uh, Open Critic is like an 80 flat. I saw, I saw uh, it was pretty kind of, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's here or there, and it's a slightly shorter campaign than I think folks were expecting. But I like the combat a lot. Uh, definitely try out that demo if you're curious, because I, I yeah. would see it in state of plays and stuff and be like, wow, that looks really good. Tried it, and I really liked it. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to try that out. See, that makes, that makes me happy, because we're pretty much aligned on a lot of things like that. I, I think I'm going to check it out in March when my, my February is much free. I finished Final Fantasy Rebirth. Uh, so I, th I think I'll save it for them. But that makes me very excited because I was on the fence. I didn't see really any of the people I knew play it. So I was like, does this, you know, how is it? You know, I see the I saw the reviews and I was like, yeah, it doesn't really the tell combat, me anything. It, it's definitely like baby's first uh, platinum game, but in a good way. It simplifies okay. it in ways that don't make it unsatisfying. So it's really good. Next up. Foam Stars uh, it comes out very soon, February 6th. Uh, as a reminder, this is PS Plus, I believe, Essentials. So as long as you have the bare minimum active PlayStation Plus subscription, you'll be able to claim this game. Uh, if you do not want to do that, it is $29.99. Uh, yes. Yeah, Foam Stars. Do you, do you, yeah. If you saw Foam Stars before, it, you know, it's the same thing. Uh, it looks like Splatoon, but as far as I understand, it, it works like differently. It's not literally Splatoon. I don't really know. But that's what I've heard. Uh, it looks like you're not actually winning based on terrain. I believe it's just to help you move around the, the environment. Uh, so mm. it's similar to Splatoon in the way you're covering the things, but not in terms of winning the game, I, I imagine. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks like Foam Stars. I, I 
I heard it was good when people touched it um, during some, I think, a PAX or something like that. Uh, so, I think it was Summer Games Fest, maybe. Yeah, that sounds better. That sounds more right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I have their hands on it. No, I have nothing. I... Look, as as Mister, as the big, actually, shit. I'm gonna get it right now. Hold on. He's getting it. He's gonna get it. I am. I don't know what he's about to grab. So let's. No see one what, knows what, what this is, is that. <laughs> no one knows what this little guy no. is. No. This is one of the, or I guess the mascot from Knockout City. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Knockout yeah. City. Very obscure. I it sure got knocked out. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, for real. Um, yeah, this is a little, uh, I think, birthday gift from Gabby. So I'm very happy about it. Um, I bring that up to say this. Uh, I like all these weird multiplayer games that are super niche and aren't just your typical shooter or battle royale or whatever. I was a big champion of Knockout City, of course. Yes, I remember um, that well. Yep. And even like, too bad it's shutting down in a couple months, but Warhaven, I really like that game on Steam. Yeah, it runs yeah. great on Steam Deck. Um, so yeah, I like these non-standard multiplayer games. I don't have faith that Foam Star is going to be here this time next year, but I do want to try it out. It does look cool. I don't like that the AI generated the little avatars in the game. I don't love that at all because that new story went out uh, a while ago, but it's such a small fraction of the game that I think I'm still going to try yeah, it out. Yeah, it, it was yeah. the album cover art is AI generated in the game, right? Uh, what I'm thinking it is, they said it was like the the character avatars. I'm thinking like an Overwatch where you unlock the thing next to your PSN oh, name at the top. Oh, I'm it. thinking those are AI, AI generated. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yes. So like yeah. you know that that it is what it is. There, I don't love that, of course, but I want to try out Foam Stars. It looks cool, and I will just quickly give a shout out. I, do you already have the PlayStation Plus lineup for February in the docket further down? Because I was going to uh, mention it here. I don't since Foam believe Stars so. Is part of it. Um, well. I can just quickly mention it real quick. Yeah, yeah, please, please. It was Steel Rising, Foam Stars, right? Else? Yeah, Foam Stars is the main one. Steel Rising, uh, Souls like PS5. Uh, only the PS5 version you're getting on that one, but Steel Rising looks really good. Roller Drome. Uh, That's for right. PS4 and PS5. Yep. Mm -hmm. I heard people so, loved yeah. that one. I never got around to it, so I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. Oh yeah, it's 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 very good from what I played, but it's definitely one of those where if you want to progress, you gotta actually get good at the game. You can't just play through it. So. <laughs> Yeah, you got to unlock challenges in order to unlock levels, but it's good. Foam Stars looks like it's going to be, you know, reasonably fun. So I'm definitely going to hop in and just try it out. February 6th. Next up, we have Dave the Diver coming out sometime in April. Did not give us a specific date, but this is I'm very happy for this. I, I had a bunch of uh, uh, people close to me saying how good it was, how much they liked it. Um, I, I originally didn't even know what the game was when people were expounding on it last year and saying like how how much they loved it. Uh, but it sounds a lot like uh, the X. Uh, I played it on Xbox. Oh my god, Moonlighter sounds a lot like Moonlighter, oh. um, where you're diving, you're getting different fish for your restaurant, and you're working at your restaurant, and then and then I think at night you're going underwater to catch fish and these things. And I cannot wait for this. I'm very happy it's coming to PlayStation. I get to try it out. Uh, and then they also said the next month that uh the month after the release they will have a godzilla dlc for free which is very cool mm. um and <laughs> i had a funny reaction uh you should you, uh, you should all go check it out it was literally uh it starts <laughs> bubbling and i was like imagine this is godzilla and then it comes out and he's godzilla i was like wow that is very cool i'm very happy they were able to do that I'm surprised they were able to get just godzilla this random indie game but yeah. very cool can i wait of course developed by mint rocket too um what yeah, did you think I'm of this I was about to say, I wasn't very surprised that they got the Godzilla uh, collab because Tencent owns them. So there's your money connection, whatever. I so, no. yeah, bingo, bingo. Indie game of the year, right? Um, nah, Data Diver is a good game. Everyone likes it. I Every time I look at it, I'm like, people are losing their mind over this game in a way I don't understand because nothing about it looks like it's the greatest thing in the world to me. But I know for a fact it's a good game. I'm happy more people are going to get to play it. It's just probably, and I'm not even a super big Godzilla person either. So it's like, all right, not me I'm good. I think it's just cool. <laughs> it is very interesting, but it's like, oh, another thing, <laughs> another mm -hmm. video game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm more excited because um, I get to see what the hubbub is about. And if it is like mm -hmm. Moonlighter, I got, <laughs> I got super into Moonlighter. So if this is about to get moonlit, <laughs> yeah, about to get, about to get Lydia. So if this is <laughs> anywhere close to that, I'm gonna have a good time. Oh yeah. Indie game of the year for for sure. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, 
Uh, next up, V Rising. Uh, I mean, Castlevania Minecraft, right? I, I mean, I, <laughs> that's what I saw in the moment I saw this. I was like, oh, here it is. I, I don't have too much to really say about this. It looks pretty, actually. It, it looks, uh, the actual gameplay itself looks engaging, but I am not a big survival guy. So as soon as he started, he literally, ha- there was <laughs> interesting way to start it. They, like the first like 10 seconds that he's already was hitting like a piece of rock. I was like, all right, cool. I, I, that, I was kind of already out at that point. <laughs> I do like the art style. I think, it, you know, it's clear what it's trying to invoke. Uh, cool, but not not my thing. Yeah, I mean, it's not my thing either. I'm not a super survival gamey person, but I, I do want to give a shout out. It's it's cool that this game blew up, got popular. It does sound, for a survival game, it does sound interesting. You are a vampire, so it kind of flips the entire go out in the night and fight monsters and stuff, and then in the daytime, go build up and do all your stuff. No, it, they flip it on its head because you can't be outside in the daytime. So you have to build shelter and do all your stuff inside the house during the day and then go out at night. Instead of, you know, usually people go out and go out in the daytime to get their harvesting and stuff. It's, it's the opposite. So um, it's a cool game. I'm probably not going to play it even here. Uh, plus, it's been Steam Deck playable. So this is definitely the type of thing I want to say for that. Yep. So kind of same here. I, I, I like on the surface, it looks cool. But I just imagine when I'm actually like actually seeing moment to moment gameplay out, I'm probably not going to be into it. Uh, but Absolutely. again, you know, good for them because it lo- it does look great, and I hope uh, it finds success because it looks awesome. Indeed, indeed. Next up, it took me a second to realize that it was actually out now. So this is available right now for free on PS5. I don't know why it's free, so, uh, so <laughs> I'm imagining there's something to be monetized if you play it. Maybe not. Maybe Konami really is just like trying to get goodwill or something. I don't know. But it's called Silent Hill: The Short Message, and then they also. Uh, had Silent Hill 2 remake trailer during all this. So as not a Silent Hill guy, literally at all, I've never played the games. I think I saw someone play it one. I think my dad played it when I was little and I watched them or something. I don't know. I have no Silent Hill experience. Uh, viewing the first thing looked kind of cool. Clearly PT inspired, I think. I mean, I mean, yeah. clearly. Um, plus, the, there was another game where you had a phone light thing. I can't remember off the top of my head, but... Uh, uh, sticking key, with sh- layers of fear cave of fear cry of fear cry of fear cry that's of fear. What it is. yeah it was yeah that, that sounds right um but silent hill short matches it looks good um it looks like they're trying to uh have like a and they oh they say it in the blog post here silent hill the short matches a new short form silent hill title featuring a young contemporary protagonist so i was quite literally about to say it seems like they're trying to be some sort of contemporary game talking about like social media and these things and like how it affects it looks like maybe it starts off with her killing herself for social media or something maybe i don't know um uh she did it for the gram yeah she did for the gram but uh, <laughs> it looks like here, let's read this part. This game started as something like an experimental project, an opportunity for us to try out different things, see what worked and what didn't, and grew and polished our horror game expertise. We also had a lot of people who are relatively new in their career but still love Silent Hill who really want to be involved in making a horror game. So we use this as a way for our team to build hands-on experience too. So it does make you know maybe, maybe makes a little bit more sense. Maybe this is like a short, maybe two-hour thing, get people into Silent Hill on their team, and then they move out to make a new Silent Hill game or something. But uh, what did you think of this? um speaking just of the silent hill short message uh this feels like a shameless hey let's do a pt as well because that was such a great marketing idea Mm -hmm. let's try and do that exact same thing i think people clocked it and are annoyed by that fact more Mm. than they're excited um i think you ask about how they're monetizing this i think this is their you know their big arg to get people looking into it and then it eventually leads to more information on that new silent hill product the one yeah with the teaser trailer with all the children and the flowers and the yeah, I'm already holes. what it's called. I forgot yeah. what it's called, but it's some something that it's like project single letter or something. I forget yeah. what the letter is. Um, but yeah, I think this is just a teaser to go towards that. I think, you know, I, I just have it all in my head where this girl who's a vlogger or whatever is trying to investigate like this school where this thing has happened, and then she dies at the end, and then it ties into the greater mystery of what's going on. Um so yeah, that that seems perfectly fine, but it just feels a little bit cynical considering how they did Kojima with the last time they did something like this. Um, but I'm sure it's fine. If we can go to the remake, because that I got something to say. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, um, uh, this did nothing for me. Uh, it looked disgusting, mm. but I imagine that's what it was meant to. But go ahead. 
well, it looked disgusting in a different way than I was expecting because Silent Hill 2 remake, this is supposed to be the big high budget triple A new take on Silent Hill 2 from Bloober Team and all this stuff. And Bloober Team, look, say what you want about their games. I know people don't really love their games. I even from the outside looking in, their games have a very cynical slant with their horror that kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth when I hear people recount it and talk about it. Right. So I don't really love it, but the their games look gorgeous, specifically the medium. The medium looked unreal just graphically, pure production quality there. And if if I may interrupt, technically too, mm-hmm. it was pretty impressive what they were able to do with that game. If you like read about mm-hmm. how they got it to work, and they, these there are like two simultaneous worlds all loaded at once, you know. So, but I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Oh no, you're good because it's absolutely you know kudos to them for pulling that off. So I know what they're capable of when I think of the medium. Why does Silent Hill Two look a little bit worse than even the Alone in the Dark reboot? Mm. <laughs> Like it just feels a little low budget, almost like it's trying to be like low poly PS2 e. Yeah, so uh, I actually kind of felt that way when it. <laughs> I don't know if you also felt this, but when it almost switched to like a, it it felt like it was like scary, 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 scary. Guy picks up the handgun. His face looked awful, by the way. I, I don't know what was mm-hmm. wrong with his face and hair. I'm something about it. I was like. Oh, this looks he looks ugly, but um, he picked up the handgun and then it switched to clearly Resident Evil, like just clearly like trying to be a Resident Evil game. And to me, I was like, but is that what Silent Hill is? I've never seen that. Is that is that even a thing? Yeah, I didn't think so. I was like, yeah, I was like, this doesn't feel like something Silent Hill does. So what is happening right now? This is Silent Hill trying to chase the Resident Evil 4-ness of it. But Silent mm-hmm. Hill was never a franchise about the gunplay, about the action. You're never meant to feel powerful in these situations. And it looks like but, you're fighting like four or five things in, in a room. Like, yeah. so you're fighting these things. And it just, it just doesn't seem like it makes sense to me. And then also I'm looking at it and I'm like, like some of the quick time events just look. I, I don't know if it's that this isn't gameplay or if the gameplay looks bad. Like, it mm. just looks stilted in weird ways. Like, animations just look a little off. I just don't quite understand what the make of this. It just looks a little... It just looks a little bleh to me. Mm. Um, maybe it'll come out and it'll be good, but in a world where all the Silent Hill fans have been absolutely shitting on Konami's treatment of this franchise in the last year with that, like, AI-generated soap opera that you can watch on Twitch oh, that they Jesus have Christ. That, where you can earn a battle pass with a It's Trauma sticker. I like, can't imagine. I, I, <laughs> I couldn't believe. I was like, this has... I thought it was fake when I first saw it. I was like, that's not real. <laughs> and it was real absolutely so i feel like we're already in a place with silent hill fans where they're hostile to anything that this new era of konami is bringing forward and this doesn't look so good that that it's going to change their mind it doesn't look like it's going to change their mind maybe if it comes out and the reviews are great cool but i feel like a lot of people a lot of the reviewers are probably going to get on this are people with familiarity with the original game and they're not going to like the new direction i just feel yeah. it coming yeah, I have to say, it does feel like Blooper Team did not have a big budget on this. It just feels that way, just looking at it. Again, maybe it comes out, looks radically different. I was a little bit wrong about, um, I think uh, I think famously, a little bit about Vowed when we saw it. I originally said it looks gross, and then, or at least not up to snuff what it should look like. The recent stuff, it looks a little better. So, um, I have eaten my words before. I'm not pretending like I know everything. But with this specifically, it does look a bit... Bland, maybe again, like you said, maybe it's intentional. They do want to still kind of feel hazy. Maybe they want this kind of fog like thing going on. Maybe mm-hmm. with the I don't know, but I thought it was strange as no one who, who who's never played one. He, he has a shock and he's running at these people <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like with it out, popping them in the head. So I thought it was weird. I I think we um we all wanted Konami back and uh, we got our wish, I guess <laughs> we got our wish. Uh, I, I just pray they don't do this this week it in. Please, God. Oh, my God. Well, right, and then, this week it in. <laughs> you get it. As a reminder, now available short message and no date or any hints for the remake. Now, next up, probably my most anticipated game, uh, period, Judas. Uh, of mm. course, Ken Levine, the creator of Bioshock. Uh-huh. I can't I mean, I really just cannot wait. Everything about it looks amazing. I think it looks incredible. Um, Although we haven't seen much about the game, I just trust that it will be good. 
Uh, I loved mm. about I mean, Bioshock, I think, is one of the best games ever created. And this looks like it is using the, t- the mm, using like the almost tone and inspiration of a Bioshock to put it somewhere else and put you in the feet of something that is completely different, both scenario wise and environmental. What do you th- what did you think of upon seeing this? I don't think we've actually talked about Judas before. I'm curious. I don't think we have. Uh, look. I love I love the Bioshock series. I, I really like that series overall. Bioshock 2 is the GOAT for me, which should tell you I Whoa. tend to like I like it when the other guy does it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because look, I love Bioshock 1. It's great, but the gameplay improvements in 2 cannot be topped. And mm-hmm. Bioshock Infinite is really fun. But man, that writing, some of the choices they make, some of the both sides isms, don't love it. Don't love it. What do you um, mean? <laughs> <laughs> they were bad uh, too. <laughs> it's like, oh, what if we just made a scenario where the good guys are bad too? And then it's like, well, they're both bad. Yeah. In yeah. Circumstances, everyone sucks. It's I like, do right. love Infinite, but it does do that at the end where it's like, <laughs> I roll. Remember. <laughs> Remember, the good guys can be bad, too. And it's like, uh, I mean, okay. yeah, but the guy kind of sure. sucks. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, as Lauren Hill once said, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I say all that to say I am looking forward to you this. Uh, gameplay wise, it looks fun. Uh, very, very interesting twist on sci-fi that they have. A very kind of like body horror oh, technological yeah. twist. Uh, I think that's really, really interesting, really twisted that, yeah. in a way that appeals to me. I just hope the writing is there, because if it's another something weird or, you know, if they do Bioshock one level writing, excellent. I, I can I can I can rock with that. And with the gameplay improvements that I hope from a Bioshock two, that's perfect for me. But please, oh, please just don't let Ken just write it. Get some consultants. <laughs> that's all I'm hoping. I, w- I will say it, it, it's it's kind of the thing where we see a lot. Uh, we saw it with um, uh, the attempt on making Mega Man back in the day with Mighty Number no. Nine. Uh, like, do they yeah. still got it? Like, we're gonna we're about to see. Does Ken still got it? He's been gone. Oh god, eleven years. Yeah, year. eleven years. Thank you. Yeah, I mm-hmm. mean, do you still got it, bro? Let's see. I don't know. He, I remember he left and uh, it was a big deal. He kept like ten people or something like that. Like, and he was like, I'm just gonna go make games and be rich. So and you know that's and that's what he's been doing. And we're about to see what what that is. I'm happy to see it. I do love uh in the trailer uh how unsettling the robots, whatever you want to call them, puppets, whatever you know, whatever they are, are. Mm-hmm. I love how it the like how just looking at them makes me unsettled. Like just that 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 stare that they have. I don't know what they did to really make it feel unsettling, but it it works. Like I am frightened when they're just looking at me and not even doing anything. Uh, and then everyone's kind of cheery, kind of like disposition, but horrible things are happening. I I, I can't wait. We happy uh, few type. I, oh, we're like this, bro. You oh were just God. about to say it. Weren't ah, you? you stole it from. <laughs> and I felt you grab it, my tongue, bro. Uh, but um, yeah, I uh, I can't I can't wait. Um, a little excerpt from the the blog in Judas. We give you a whole new world to explore. The corridors of the Mayflower, cool name, a spacefaring city whose citizens are trained to spy on one another. Wonder what that's inspired by, and tear each other apart for the slightest offensive. Uh, where ma- machines control every aspect of business, art, and government, the ship's leaders try to turn you into something you're not—a model citizen—and you spark a devastating revolution to tear it all down. I mean, that sounds uh, fucking sick, dude. I mean, are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> that sounds sick. Now I understand, you know, you're writing all that. I, I get that, but. Whew, that sounds sick. And uh, just the picture of the eat the cookie and then the, the donkey head guy slumped over. Oh, God, yeah. this looks sick. Looks like he shot himself or shot this lady or something. I don't know. But this looks, this looks awesome. Look, and it does look like big. it has that Bioshock 2 mm-hmm. gameplay that you were saying. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. You. But um, it looks like you are using abilities and guns at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that has me excited. And like you said, this this premise sounds really neat, but what it's just because i'm poisoned from bioshock infinite i look at the sentence where was it where was it i look at the sentence uh a space ring city where citizens are trained to spy on one another and tear each other apart for the slightest offense i'm like is this going to be a heavy-handed cancel culture commentary (laughs) i'm just really nervous because like that's the level i expect from bioshock infinite yeah not necessarily bioshock one i I imagine it's a north korean kind of reference but maybe 
maybe it, maybe it is so. a cancel culture kind of thing, but I assume it's a uh, uh, a neighbor thing would be a more inspired take. Yeah, yeah. I assume a neighbor report neighbor situation is what mm-hmm. I'm imagining. But if it is this, yeah, kind of cancel culture thing, that would be a, you know probably a little lame, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We shall I, see. It's just. He's he's shaken my faith. It's not that I think this is gonna be bad. It's just I don't know anymore. Yeah, so you don't I know if it's wait. a ten. So like you're not you're not in, you're not in it. Like it's like you know it'll be yeah. good, but like is it great? Game I get plays that. at least an eight. Story is also there. Yeah, that's a ten. Mm-hmm. God. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Next up, uh, two things. Uh, I I have to admit I don't care because one I don't have a PSVR two, and um uh there there is nothing enticing for me on this platform so there has to be there is not the i need a vr to do x thing yet so i have nothing really to add for the next two things let me know if you want to talk about anything we're going to be talking about metro awakening coming to psvr2 at some time does not i believe yeah it's just sometime this year and then after that it has legendary tales vr i believe this was already out on something else am i wrong about that I remember seeing this before, but maybe it wasn't out yet. This comes out February 8th. It's very soon. Yeah, I'm going to look up Legendary Tales while I'm talking, but I'll say um, very quickly on Legendary Tales, it, oh, it is on early access on Steam already. It's okay, already yeah, I thought I thought that was out. Yeah, it's been out for like <laughs> three years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, but I will say Legendary Tales seems like one of those games that presents well it looks like a game that's fun to play if you're playing it, but just doesn't look like an impressive, like, oh, look at the graphics. Oh, look at the cinematics. It's not one of those games. So it's not a great showcase game, but like the cool powers you, that he was shooting out, he had like the little Captain America shield that was bouncing around. He yeah. had a magic wand to shoot spells. Yeah. Like, it looks like a fucking really cool toy box playground to just fuck around and fuck around with your friends also in multiplayer. Yeah. That looks awesome. I don't have a PSVR. <laughs> So, yeah. I, or I don't have a second one. So, you know, yeah, I have the first one. one. I don't have the second one. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So, Legendary Tales looks cool, but not the greatest thing. But the other game makes me want to buy a PSVR too. <laughs> so, I I would be lying to say full on there, but when the little things that were happening throughout the trailer, I was like, it's pretty cool. Like when he sat there and like there was two people and it's clearly like stealth segment and like he grabs, cocks the gun back. You see the bullet enter the chamber. You let, let it go. Mm. And then he, I'm like, oh, okay, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And then I think some other thing happened that I come, I can't remember the, uh, but there was something else that happened. I, I liked a lot too. It, it does. If, if it, this is one of those where I'm like, okay, you got a game probably that I'll be interested in on the platform now. Yeah. Like, the metro games i love the metro series i've played two and a half of them because i still need to finish exodus but they are known for atmosphere they have worlds that you feel like you're in the muck you're in the sand you're in the irradiated air while playing those games they're very immersive so a vr version of that sounds like a match made in heaven i want to play this very very bad do i want to play this 500 dollars bad 560 or whatever it is because you gotta buy yeah. the game <laughs> Five, 560 probably not and yeah. i don't think i'll be at that point for quite a while but i can't wait to one day play this i'm glad it exists but it's not gonna sell a headset for me because i just can't be sold on a headset when i have a psvr one and a quest two so i'm good right now yeah, yeah and i have just no i need i need something more than one two three like there's probably up to like three games that i want to play and then, like I said, if they ever make, they won't, obviously. But if they ever made them backwards compatible, I would have already bought one. But it's same. They, they they haven't, so I just don't have an interest in this platform. So it, it has to have banger after banger, and that's just not how that yeah. that storefront really works. Like the, the, mm-hmm. they don't want to go all in because they know they're not going to make enough money off to, to justify it. So you know, you're only going to get these couple games. I feel like every year, um, unless something, you know, you have to mm-hmm. kind of rely on second third party to to kind of fill in the the emptiness of a PlayStation first party uh, would it actually have. Mm-hmm. I, I do want to ask a question real quick related to PSVR 2 just a little bit. Um, do you think the reason that we still haven't seen an Astrobot game is because they were waiting to see the sales for the new headset to see if it was going to be flat screen or VR? Um, <laughs> I I think the reason we haven't seen an Astrobot game is, is a few things. Um, Probably one, uh, uh, obviously because the team got um, 
heavily reduced, but because mm. uh, it's Tima, I'm, I'm hopefully I'm getting this. It's Tima Sobi now, but yeah, it was originally it was PlayStation Japan. Japan then mm-hmm. they shuttered and now they're like they're they're I think like they kept like 20 percent of them or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I think that probably fucked up a lot. Uh, and assumably it was only that team. Maybe who knows? Maybe they cut off a lot of them. I, I don't yeah. I don't know. The they killed of that, the whole but, studio except for Team Asobi. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that messed them up a lot. I am kind of shocked we haven't seen anything because of how small the not, I mean, I guess it wasn't very small, but you know how light it felt like at the time those the playstation game because you know it came free with the system it felt kind of like this little thing that you had fun with uh i'm surprised we haven't gotten like a sequel to that or something uh Mm -hmm. so i wonder what they are doing maybe they did maybe they have some mock-up of a vr game they worked on and they saw the sales and maybe they have the choice to be like fuck that converted or they're gonna do dual which would take probably much longer to do mm. and have a have a Astrobot game because I imagine the the even though it was on every system, I imagine it did pretty well because I had a good opening. People probably knew it was free when they got the system, so they probably tried it out. Uh, I imagine it was popular, so that might say why they're taking so long, because they were maybe given the option of like, you know, if you want to make another one and the VR one, you know, we won't be mad or. Maybe they had the mm-hmm. option. I don't know how Team Asobi doesn't feel like the studio who would ha- who would be able to make a call like that. But maybe they've got gotten respect, and we all know Sony likes their Japan teams a little better. You know, I mean, if they're not going to respect Media Molecule, what, what's the other not, what's yeah, the other family friendly game studio they have? Yeah, and yeah, you, you might say Insomniac, but if we're being mm-hmm. honest, they're big boys. Yeah, adults playing Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's adult kids playing Spider Man. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you know, ah, you yeah. got your teens and these things playing, but that's not the core demographic. The the, the core demographic is probably twenty five to thirty five ish, ish, is probably the vast majority of sales. So they definitely are not. And we all know they're not going back <laughs> to that demographic either. They're sticking with mm-hmm. the, the demographic they got. So uh, I don't know. I do. I'm like. You know, I do hate that we didn't haven't gotten another Astrobot because as a person who had never played them before, when I got the PS5, that was awesome. I love that. And I'm not a platforming guy. Not a platforming guy at all. I barely mm-hmm. played them. But playing that, that was so much fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, the only matter of time. Give it another year. 2025 will be the year of Astrobot. A year yeah, year it'll be like year Luigi, year of Astrobot. Indeed, indeed. Next up. Dragon's Dogma 2 got a little trailer, showcased a couple things, but I don't feel like anything was very shocking coming out March 22nd. Uh, same release date of another game in this uh, state of play, which I feel like is probably not uh, very uh, saw uh, or seen very kindly to their partners. But maybe we'll uh, we uh, I want to talk about that later. But Dragon's Dogma 2 looks great. They showed off a new vocation which is the class system in the game uh it looks like a war mage if you don't know what a war mage is you know you're able to use your great swords and uh magic to be able to fight creatures in the game Uh, there was a very cool part in the trailer where uh this wizard character made an ice attack the ice attack shattered Mm. but what was left was ice steps and they used that to then jump onto a creature um i think dragon's dogma sells itself on the use of verticality verticality in their gameplay it's very unique and i don't think many people do it as you're able to literally climb onto beasts and fight them very monster hunter uh and you're able to uh really just fuck them up from on top of their back and fly them around i remember in the original one it was very similar um i will say if i have to say some negatives on this game uh it looks like a game called dragon's dogma got a sequel called dragon's dogma 2 and it looks exactly like that it looks I mean, this looks almost like a high res first game. Like if you if I didn't remember uh, Dragon's Dogma one and you showed me this and, and, you know, you wiped the memories of me knowing Dragon's Dogma two existed, I'd be like, did they remake one or is this a new game? Like it really does look exactly like the first one. I will be interested to see if they're able to kind of move away from that or maybe they'll embrace it because it's not like we get a lot of games like this. Like there is no other game where you're able to kind of use like an online service to, to like get your friends and a party with you to then go and uh, kind of feel like you're on an adventuring party at night 
and you have to have a lantern out and who knows what it will attack you on a road mm-hmm. and there's so many yeah. little things um i want to know i know it's i feel like i know you well enough it just doesn't seem like an emic game am i right about that i want this to be an emic game so bad but it is sadly not um, yeah i didn't think so yeah, the original I put in maybe two or three hours into. I actually started it again on Steam Deck not that long ago. Um, but, you know, you're talking about the companion system. The cool thing about Dragon's Dogma, and it's also carried over into the sequel, yeah. your your NPC companions in the game. Pawns. They learn. Yeah, they're yeah pawns. They learn stuff from you. They learn locations as you explore. Then they get uploaded online, and then another player entirely somewhere else can take that pawn have them in their party, and then let's say you beat a side mission that they're now on, now your pawn's like, oh, I know where the location is for this, and they just take you there. In a, they don't like fast travel. They don't pop it up on your map. There's no icons on maps or nothing. It's just, hey, I know where it is, and then you just follow each other down there. It's very, very cool. It's a different way to do you know, open world traversal. Um, I, like, I like all the magic stuff in this game. It sounds yes. like you know, they talked about, oh, you have a, a magic uh uh what is it a battle mage i think it was yeah where yeah it's called the wave war sorry warfarer sorry that's it yeah warfare that sounds like absolutely my shit because i always want to use swords but then i'm mad when i can't use my staff and do Mm -hmm. spells i can have best of both worlds here uh the vertical combat seems so cool everything about this game looks really cool even if i'm not a big swords and sorcery type guy but I don't think I'm going to get around to Dragon's Dogma 2 anytime soon for reasons I said earlier, yeah. uh, but I got that original. I'll play it on Steam Deck one of these days, and I think I will be sold. So, yeah, I'm, I can't wait to come around to this game. I think it's going to really blow a lot of people away because you're right. It looks a lot like that first game, but I think that first game is so iconic. It can't yes. look like anything else. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, you know, that I think is actually probably a more of a plus on the game than a negative because the way the game plays is not really emulated anywhere else. You can argue, mm-hmm. you, you know, maybe you'll see an Elden Ring kind of, but not really. You're not really climbing. Not even. Uh, you can tell, you can tell like, uh, you know, the original Express probably is like Shadow Colossus or something, but it, like, mm-hmm. it really does feel like you are in this world when you play the game, which is very cool. Um, uh, I couldn't even tell you anything about that story of the original one because I really, I really just it, it was a game where I turned it on and just played and messed around. Like I just mm-hmm. I did side quests, I ran around in caves and dungeons and all these things. It's very cool. And it, the the story premise is wild if you don't know what it is. I mean, literally the first game is about a dragon eating your heart and then flying away, and you got to go kill him and get your heart back. I mean, I mean, what kind of game? What that is a wild way to start a game? <laughs> uh, is g- getting your heart eaten in front of you? Uh, but as far as that, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the game. They kind of teased the thing at the end, uh, something about a, a, a uh, in the blog post expounds on it. Um, so Dragon's Plague is a contagious disease like status that infects pawns under certain conditions. While affected, the pawns basic stats will improve and their behavior will change. It spreads among the pawns on their travels between worlds. And in the early stages of the illness, the afflicted pawn won't fall ill, but rather display abilities and confidence that exceeds what they would normally have. In the later stages of the illness, however, the Dragon's Plague is set to result in devastating calamity. There is a, there is little information on Dragon's Plague in the world, and its veracity is questionable. Or veracity is accessible, nor is it clear what devastating calamity refers to. That's pretty oh. sick. They they're giving people AIDS and like spreading it around <laughs> like that's kind of sick. That's pretty cool. It reminds me of the World of Warcraft um, oh blood plague thing they did. I mean years ago now, but uh, that's pretty that's pretty sick. That's that's just like that weird I thing that. that you don't know you like, but when someone comes up and you're like, yeah, that's pretty sick. That's that Japanese game shit. That's the yeah, yeah. Near Automata type shit. That's I yep. love that so much. It, it makes me want to play the game even more, to be honest. But for the same reasons I said earlier, yeah. I'll get around to it one of these days. Yeah, yeah. I will definitely be checking this out March 22nd. Hell yeah. Next up, we have a game that's coming out the same day. And I want to ask you after this. Or actually, no. I want to talk about it right now. Uh, you imagine if you're at both Capcom and it, um, <laughs> if you're at Koei Tecmo, you're fucking pissed. You're like, uh, you displayed our game next to another game with the same date. What the fuck are you doing? Like, I would be pretty mad. Uh, what do you think? Am I overreacting here? I think that is quite. 
I think I'd be pretty pretty pissed if I was PR at either of these studios. I'd be calling Sony up like, dude, what are you doing? I know you can't foresee the future, but bro, you got to like make sure that does not happen again. I think if anything, they probably should have at least faced him out. Like start the gate, start the showcase with Ronan end the showcase with uh, Dragon's Dogma or just have several games in between. So yeah. it's not so obvious. But at the same time, these games look different enough. They like, are very yes. different, but that, but yeah, but like when we're talking about like the, uh, like the hype, you know, PR fucking loves that. Like, oh, well, you mm-hmm. know, we got this many impressions. Uh, and but like when it's on the same day, I just feel like if I'm a PR guy at there, I'm like, dude, what? The same day on the same state of play? Like, I don't even think they'd be mad they share the same date. It's just that they're on the same viewing platform. Yeah. And it's like, because when you end it with a trailer, that's like the call to action. Now, instead of, like, for that second game, Rise of Ronin, instead of that date being a, now go buy this game on this day, it's, now go make a choice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is no longer, you know, just do the thing for us. It's, now you got to think about the other thing that just happened on top of the thing we just showed you. So that's a little bit annoying. But I got to be honest, if I'm if I'm voting between which one would I make the choice on? I think Rise of Ronin looks cool. I'm going to stick with Wulong Fallen Dynasty and I'm going to pick that Oh, there you go. OK, OK, OK. I, I would probably agree, uh, although mm-hmm. I was not expect. I must admit, um, and maybe I uh, just did not pay attention enough. I did not see Rise of Ronin coming in the way of uh, how the gameplay worked out. I just was not. I don't know. Um, maybe I was expecting a Sekiro Ghost of Tsushima hybrid in maybe a more open world environment or something, but I was not expecting the. It almost feel it feels like a like an old. I don't, I don't mean it as a derogatory. I, can, I mean it as a positive, but it feels like a PS2 game, ninja game where you are running around in like a ninja town and killing people and stealing their weapons and using it. Up. It's like I just was not expecting that from this. W- were you seeing this coming? Um, yeah, I mean, they did say it was going to be open world. They were aiming for like an Assassin's Creed type of game. So, you know, that was, you know, Team Ninja's big swing at a game like that. So I kind of expect that when, when you talk about, oh, it feels like a PS2 game. Are you thinking like a Legend of Kai type of game? Kind of, kind of. Yeah, I'm not saying it feels like mm. I just like it reminds me of, of what we would have played on a PS2 where I'm like, oh, I'm a ninja and I get to steal weapons and run around and stab people and mm-hmm. stuff. But I will say it, it is very modernized. They, like this looks great. I'm just saying like, wow, this this feels like I would have played a game like this on a PS2, which I love the PS2. So, see, I feel similarly, well, but just without the PS2 reference, this game, mm. it looks it looks very fun. It looks like if I got this game, picked it up, I'd probably have a blast with it. But there's something about this game that just has that PS3 jank specific, oh, where it's okay. just like just animation, just like I think it's because this game looks so close to something like a Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. And we've seen how meticulously detailed that game is where this game in honestly in Team Ninja fashion, this has very flashy animations that like clip through things. You're not necessarily getting them reacting to the environments around. It's you're canceling animations very swiftly it feels very video gamey even when he has like a flamethrower as a ninja and he's like blowing people up it just looks very video gamey and i fuck with that and i you know i actually respect that in a lot of ways but it just doesn't look so quote unquote immersive and it looks less impressive when presented right next to dragon's dawn with two on the same date at that so you know to that i say I talked about how Wulong is a game that I've liked. I, I liked a lot from last year. I okay. want to go back and play some more of that. I think I would do that before I get onto this because even some of the pop in and some of these like open big field areas where you're yeah. riding your horse, it's like it feels very like late PS3 generation, which I fuck with. You know, I'm Mr. PS3, but eh, I just got to call it how I see it. Yeah, I gotta say, um, when they opened it, it looked really sick with you know the the the, the samurai sword fight off. But when he kills him, it very much did not look like a like scripted thing. It looked like a you know, oh, this is the this is the execution you'll do on human like human guys. Mm-hmm. You'll do this move and then that move and then they'll go down. And it, it didn't look like the guy was really reacting well and didn't look like very scripted in the way that you would imagine like a polished, like kind of swordman's fight like that was happening was. Uh, Absolutely. I have to, <laughs> I have to expound on what you were saying earlier when he takes the flamethrower out. I have to, I have to agree. I'm like, when I saw the flamethrower, I was like, huh? 
no, 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 no. I, I could have went without that. Did we need yeah. that in the game? I, I would have preferred. Like, I, I think the cool thing is his him using the um, uh, kind of musket weapon as a sword to like deflect and then yeah. back up and then shoot. That's sick. But that the flamethrower, like that, the didn't look look like a, it looked like a screenshot from like Dead Rising Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like, and you'll be able to use it long range, similar to front flamethrowers in the World War. I'm like, what? And it and it looks way too futuristic for where we are. Like it literally looks mm-hmm. like a, like it's about to shoot napalm twenty yards away. <laughs> like, yeah. So it, it looks like the Leonardo da Vinci flight suit from the Fast Three Two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, I think that's kind of yeah, the way that they're going and I think it, that's I think mm-hmm. that's on purpose like yeah like you said and mm-hmm. um I know you brought up Assassin's Creed it, wasn't that was that reference by them or someone maybe maybe, uh, maybe not by them but I feel like there there's an Assassin's Creed connection somewhere maybe it's a dev or something but I I also remember hearing the name Assassin's Creed linked to this and being and thinking like oh yeah that makes sense um I will say quickly here, yeah. Um, so the, it looks like it did kind of center around traversal, showing off the wingsuit, showing off the rope. Clearly, Sekiro inspired, like that kind of very quick hit, yoink, and and uh, traverse that way. I like the combat styles and these things. It looks like they really wanted to be like, look at the sword, and then they like quickly show you the spear and then quickly go away from it. I'm like, mm, I wonder if you're hiding something there or if you want to. Uh, you know, have some surprises later on in the game. Uh, I do think it kind of shows. I think this is a good example of of what what we mean when we say double A, triple A. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like this does not this. This is that, you know, when you see this and you look at a Ghost Shima, you look at a Sekiro, you look, you know, you look at something that it would easily compare to. You kind of get it. You're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like, it didn't look Mm -hmm. super great in a lot of places, but you still think it'll be a good game. I still think this is going to be great. And I've long said there needs to be more double A games specifically because of budgets and uh, many other reasons. But I think I think it'll be good. Hopefully it comes out working good. I mean, I love Team Ninja. I I want them to uh, keep keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Hopefully, hopefully people don't think of this as just Ghost of Tsushima at home. But yeah, it looks good. I'm worried that that is kind of the vibe that will be had when this launches. Like, um, and it, I, I'm, I'll be curious to see if people are more or less excited after seeing the more in-depth trailer than they were prior, because I do feel like we all kind of thought this was going to be something else versus what we saw. Like, I, I mean, I really was surprised when the guy took a fucking flamethrower out. I was like, what? I, I thought this was going to be a, yeah. you got a sword, you're you know you're you're a samurai maybe well, you you know you find other weapons but like that was just you know i don't know that just surprised well, me i guess I, I mean they already had what was it uh like a dragon ishin uh earlier last year where you had a sword or a gun and mm. you could switch between the two or just use both at the same time right. um so i think it's like that time period where it's like a you know not quite japanese western but definitely like we're late 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 in that in that period of samurai and now technology is advancing and things are happening. So I think it's a really unique setting. It's just, you know, it feels very Assassin's Creed two, but Japan, um, which is cool, but we'll see if that's enough, if that's unique of enough slant for people come and, and, uh, and yeah. March. Yeah. And I don't mean it to be like, Oh, it's unrealistic. You know, it does say late oh, yeah, 19th yeah, century Japan. So, you know, I'm not like, Oh, mm-hmm pushes like no like glasses up Nerd glass, not, yeah. yeah so i get that and also it does kind of feel like um an attempt at a red dead redemption one if you guys play if uh, mm. you people play that at home that is very cowboy era ending kind of thing maybe this is like a oh this you know samurai's ending like this is the end of that and you're going to progress through it and you might not like it by the time you you know i remember being handed like a modern gun in red dead and being like i'm not using this i need a revolver like what am i doing <laughs> next up uh I, I don't know about you but this was like spoiled seven different ways for me so i knew this was coming uh it mm-hmm. doesn't change my opinion on this at all uh until dawn it will be an enhanced version of until dawn coming to ps5 and pc later this year uh clearly so there's an until dawn product on the market whenever that movie comes out uh interesting that it's so soon you would think you'd hold this uh but it's here now uh, I gotta say, huh, it's cool. I, I don't really, 
I don't know why this exists. I don't know why it's being released right now. I mean, everything about this is a question mark to me. Until Dawn's a great game. It can be played on a PS5 right now. You can go buy, buy it on PS4, play it right at now. At high frame rates. Uh, at high frame rates, too. Uh, so, I mean, I, I will say the trailer looks good, but why would I... Re- I don't know. Why, why would you? Re- why would I replay Until Dawn? I feel like, although Until Dawn's like, you know, to make this decision, blah, blah, blah. I liked having my one playthrough and then... Peace it out. Like, I don't think Until Dawn really had the thing where you really want to replay it unless you're a trophy hunter or you really do want to see a specific decision and how it ramifications later in the story. But I don't know. Maybe I'm a little too down on it, but I'm not excited for this at all. I don't know why it's being released now. I mean, literally everything about it is a question mark to me. Um, let's see. Uh, so it says news on this is coming later this year. I could see this. I feel like this is an obvious October game. It makes sense to come out in October. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I feel like at this point, PlayStation is just going to make, they're just going to re-release any game that recently got movie rights. This just got movie rights a couple weeks ago. Yep. One plus one equals two on that. And also, I feel like this is an opportunity for them to bring this more in line with the PlayStation house style. Uh, looking through the blog post, uh, let's see. Uh, there's this little paragraph right here, uh, incorporating a third person camera and adding contextual character movement animations. The game now allows the player to really feel the experience of that frightful night. Um, I think this is them doing the third person cinematic game with this because uh, this was one of those like you know, Resident Evil type cameras in the corner and people walk around the environment um now it's going to be closer to your god of war closer to your uncharted closer to all those games and it's cool i'm sure that's going to be really neat when you see hayden pinetier put her hand out onto the wall as she walks past it but i mm. this absolutely is unnecessary i'm right there with you uh you could have for way cheaper you could have just ported the thing to pc uh, rather than just remaking the game in Unreal Engine 5 so you can just rotate around a character. Uh, yeah, as far as I understand, two years, I think it took this. I'm like, does that need it? Was that needed? Like, two years on used... Until Dawn. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it was very popular back then, but I think it was. it was popular because it was a novelty, yeah. not because this thing itself is some piece of high art. <laughs> yeah, and, and to be- uh, piggyback on, on your novelty, it, it that I, I think, you know, if you weren't around then or you maybe you forgot, it was kind of a novelty and it was like, Oh, you get, it, it was kind of that time where it's like we're playing movies and, you know, we're taking ourselves mm-hmm. seriously. And, and for some reason, we like linked serious to movies and then tried to make games about a movie that you could play, but it was still a movie. So I'm not trying to say mm-hmm. like this shouldn't exist or anything, but it's just but why? Like the timing's weird. The that it took two years to do this. You could have used this money. You know, I feel like somewhere else the tools could be used somewhere else. It's just strange. And again, let's not forget, you could have still played this on your PS4. Let's look. Let's pick out the PS3 catalog. What? Yeah. All these other games we could have. Siren remake for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, we, there's many we could do that with. We could just go yeah. through the PS3 catalog. This, this, this. And I've I don't know, maybe may, maybe I'll be I've eating my shit and, and this is going to top the charts that month and people love it. And I don't know, but I, I, I'm this was a question mark. I will also say that, you know, this genre of game has become super popular with the Dark Pictures anthology, but even also with things like Wales Interactive Games, you know, your Blood Sports, your Night Shifts, your The Bunkers, all those games are really in the same ilk. I think making it third person brings it closer to the house style and differentiates it even more from yeah. your, you know, the quarries and whatnot, um, even though the quarry is third person, too. So maybe it it's is. more in line with that. Um you know, it, in any case, I think it's kind of separating itself from the lineage that Until Dawn created by aligning itself more with, you know, these direct character action games. So um, that's cool. But once again, I'm not buying this. doesn't need to exist. But, you know, capitalism is going to capitalize. Oh, yeah. And, you know, maybe they'll do they won't. But maybe they'll do some sort of upgrade <laughs> path for this. They won't. But... God, you know, no. they won't. No, yeah. they won't. you they already won't. know they won't. Uh... Money. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we can move on. And until dawn, you know, good for them, I guess. <laughs> Next up, uh, Death Stranding Two. I mean, wow, it's Death Stranding Two. I can't tell you what the fuck just happened. I just watched it <laughs> 30, 40 minutes ago. I have no idea, Emmett, what I watched. It looks and 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 you know what? And I'm happy about it. I'll be playing it. I liked Death Stranding One. I think um, 
it's a slow burn. I really do think y- you have to really stick with it. Either you like Kojima and you're playing it regardless, or you really do need to stick with it because like, you think it's a game about something, and it is, but it's also this batshit other... Like, there's, like, two games put together in this crazy... It really is crazy. Like, when it's you really, like, start playing it, it's insane. wild. You're throwing pee and poo at things <laughs> and killing them, <laughs> using your blood as a weapon, and wild stuff. Even more. Um, Look, I... As someone who has not played Death Stranding anything... Um, I own the game like twice at wow. this point. I thought you played Death Stranding. I don't know why I thought that. I, I thought it, I thought you did. It, because it's weird and you would associate yeah. the weird game with That's me. True. So absolutely makes sense. But I picked it up on PS4, really, really hoping to cash in on that PS5 upgrade. And before I could even do that, I got it included in Humble Bundle Choice. So now I have it on Steam Deck 2. I haven't gotten around to it. I want to. It looks very interesting. And plus the themes that people talk about are in the game. Sound like some themes that are very, like, I would fuck with on a deep, deep, deep level in my heart. Um, so I want to get around to it, but this trailer, this nine-minute epic, is just so crazy. Yeah. So, like, you know, George Miller's in the fucking game, apparently. He there's is. This, yeah, there's this, like, one-third of the frame rate of the game animated little doll <laughs> with you. Like, it's a bunch of weird shit in this game. I don't I'm. I would love... I'm sure Kojima, what he loves videotaping himself and talking about stuff and shit. I want to know how the fuck did they get that to work? How did they get that to animate the way it does in a game? Like, like, how does that work? Like, is it a closed frame rate? So, like, regardless of how high your frame rate you're playing, like, it won't affect that thing. I, it's so cool. I, I don't that that is, I want to know how that works. Like, I I don't even understand they how probably that would work in a game. for that Spider Verse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, how the fuck do you make that one? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The same way they were like, hey, uh, fucking uh, Horizon people, can we see that engine real quick? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But yeah, it's just I'm I'm so impressed by not only how strange it is, not only how impressive, like the shot of Sam Porter Bridges on the moon or uh, very asteroid. close to a moon. I imagine yes. he's on an asteroid, probably getting a mineral to deliver, but it's next to the moon, maybe, or it's stuck in the yeah. moon's orbit. That was sick as f- I mean, that was sick. I was like, it that's was. cool. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was really fucking cool. And then also the diversity of environments this time around, where you're going in sandy places, there's snowy yep. places. It's really cool. It's really insane. I see that, and then I'm like, Troy Baker's playing an electric, gu- a literal electric a l- guitar at people. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and I love that it's fucking Troy Baker. It's no one else. It's literally mm-hmm. Troy Baker. The, there's i won't uh, i can't say more but like just him at all is wild and the way he has this guitar starts i was like how is this real he's like he's like and then he's shooting the electricity at these guys i'm like what the fuck oh my god and then for no reason the game that like in the first two minutes of the trailer without explaining it at all they're just in black and white (laughs) <laughs> and and mm-hmm. not not the game but just the characters like that's i and and you wow. know it's gonna be a cool reason and by cool i mean mm-hmm. fucking weird um and emmett i just gotta ask Please. should we have connected should Ooh. we should we have i don't know man i don't know <laughs> i'm seeing this i'm like oh shit what happened uh, uh but no I, we're always gonna ask more questions if there's a sequel to be made of course of course <laughs> but um and also the weird hands she had on her fragile. Oh, I think that's the it, tightest shit. It's so cool, so cool. Oh, oh. I, it, it just hit the scene where she where she uh, does the the sh and it, and it's I, like it's so cool. I got the trailer up rewatching it while yeah. we talk, and yeah, the same thing just happened. And this finger snap to light the cigarette. Like, yep. there's so many cool shit. It's cool shit. There's so much cool shit in Kojima games where I'm like, man, I want to play this. You're saying I gotta sit here for 45 hours? It's like if you read. Walk? Uh, it's like you read the notes app on his phone and it's just cool shit that have nothing to do with each other. And he just made a game about it. Like mm-hmm. he's, like, he's like, Oh, wouldn't it be cool if you had hands on, on a suit, but it wasn't real hands, but you could control it. And it's just in the game, never going to be talked about, but it's a thing she has. Like, it's so cool. And then I'm at yeah. the part with the doll. I am intrigued by this. I really would love to know how this is. I mean, maybe it's simple and I'm just dumb, but it lo- that looks like something that would be incredibly hard to do, especially in, when you can mess with frame rate. So I'm like, I'm really like fascinated with what it is. It does look like it is Death Stranding 
again, where you are delivering, but also you could see weapons. So maybe there's more combat because it looks like you're starting the game maybe with guns. So maybe you're already fighting stuff. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stan Porter Blicky. I like it. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, this one looks interesting, just like the first one looked interesting. If there's more combat, maybe that'll do something for me. But people, the combat in the original game was a little bit clunky because that was not the point of the matter. And we'll see if they've changed the design a little bit to account for more combat in the sequel. But it looks fascinating. It looks beautiful. I'm very interested. I understand nothing. And that makes me even more intrigued. Yeah, so um, I want to know, um, I really want the Emmet. Mm. Like... Break, like I want you to play Death Stranding one. Like I really want, I want to know like what you think about that game. I'm, and that, like it almost makes me excited that you haven't played it because I want you to play it, and then I want to hear you talk about it. Like, like w- does this make you want to play the first one? Is that a, is that a plan at all? I mean, you already own it too, so that, that's one that's one barrier down. I am. I'm gonna pull up this list. I made a list a while ago on Backlog, and you can follow me on Blacklog. Blacklog. Oh my fucking oh, god. Oh Blacklog. <laughs> I didn't know that man. I didn't know. <laughs> look, look uh, Gabby's happy. Nah, let me not even say yeah. that. Oh <laughs> shit! He stopped me immediately. Oh no, let me let me not right check that. You know what? I'm not even gonna say whether or not I can catch that. Yeah. Um, but I will say I made a list on backlogged.com. You can follow me on there, EJ Spun Six One. Um, I gotta find it. Where did I put it? It was a list of all of the like pretentious games. There it is. Games to play so I can watch a video essay about them and feel smart. <laughs> and and the poster a... child is Death Stranding. Like that is the uh, the poster child for that genre. <laughs> De- Death Stranding is absolutely on here, but it's a list of twenty eight games. But of these games that I actually want to make sure I check off, I've I've had Death Stranding on there forever. I've had Disco Elysium on there forever. Same. Soma. I need to play Disco Elysium so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Disco Elysium, Soma, forever. I've had that on there. Kentucky Route Zero, Immortality, Signalis. Oh, you haven't you played know. Immortality. I have not played Immortality. And look, I have that on Steam. I have it on Steam. I know, but I, I got to get around to it. I, I want to beat Celeste, Night in the Woods, Return of the Oberdin. Like, I can keep going. Outer Wilds, let me tell you. I got a lot of shit to do. And to be honest, the year's just started. Maybe I just make this list my priority. Yeah, I, I so to back it all up, mm-hmm. I need you to trust immortality, top of the list. All right. It's okay. also quick. It's not gonna take very long, especially if you just want to beat it and move on. Um, I got the thousand because fucking a that game two death stranding i would very much like to hear your thoughts two, one because i want to replay it and that would give me an excuse and maybe we could do some content about it and mm. and three i think it's an emic game i really do think you would play it enjoy it and i want you ready for death stranding too because i i think it, i think it's your shit man i i think you'll like it mm. okay. immortality but it, is guaranteed to be your shit though oh my god I, I it's just a game that i'm like i know i'm gonna like lose my fucking mind about it so mm. It's it's like when you're delaying the gratification, where it's like I know it's gonna be good. Yeah, uh, you're, yeah, you're yeah. edging yourself. I I am edging myself. Yes, master the, edger. The, well, yes, I, I that was just so perfectly nailed. I'm just flabbergasted. You just took the wind out of my sails with that. Holy shit! I'm absolutely edging myself with entertainment. You're fucking right. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, yeah, Stanley. That's gonna be the way. tweet, by the way. That'll be the clip. <laughs> I am absolutely edging myself. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Um, once again, get non, nah, let me not. Uh, anywho. <laughs> so, yes, I, I want to play Death Stranding 1. I want to play Death Stranding 2. I will get around to it at some point. But, you know, life is life in this year. So we'll see about it. I get, And I get it, too. And obviously, I'm just intrigued what you your, your thoughts on the game. And mm-hmm. <sighs> I really am excited about Death Stranding 2. And again, I want to reiterate, I barely understand what happened in the first one. Like, I barely understand what's going on. But I'm so excited. Um, it They did kind of drop a lot of important events near the end of the trailer that, that I'm like, like why would you died? tell us? Yeah, and I was like, why would you tell us that? I, I, and, I'm like, mm, I, and, and I'm like, it's Kojima. I got to trust him. But that was weird. I was like, that's a pretty fucking big deal. Uh, so why would you say that in the trailer for the game? But it, it, he's, the, he's the guy. So I, 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 who the fuck am I to say like why is that in the trailer? <laughs> so, and also I, I don't know. I, 
I think a Death Stranding death is like nebulous, so maybe it's not a big deal that they died or something. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. But I can't. I can't. <laughs> Fuck me, dude. I can't wait. Uh, to I can't to round it. To, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're edging. You can't. You can't play it. Uh, I will say. Oh, and also Eli Fanning is in this. People are freaking out. Oh, Good L for Fanning. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is it L Fanning? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny. I didn't know that was L Fanning, but I thought that was Dakota Fanning. And I was like, wait, she's not the one attached to this game. Oh, the other Fanning. And then there yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, uh, uh, former co host Alex texted me, oh, L Fanning. I'm like, I'm glad people are happy. I have no idea who that is, but I'm glad people are happy. That was a big deal. I remember people were like seeing, like, she's leaving Kojima Productions multiple times, like psychos. I'm like, Jesus, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get yeah. it. But, oh my God. But. Um, give, just give it a minute. Hunter Schaefer will be in the next trailer. Guarantee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some other That's his Taylor, new muse. Taylor Swift's in, in the next one. I, I guarantee. No, you. not even Taylor Swift. Just Kojima's been tweeting a lot about Hunter Schaefer. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 That's kind of how Kojima works. He just tweet. He just tells you what he's doing. So mm -hmm. pretty much um, to and then to round off the core state of play, they end with Herman Holst talking with Kojima, saying that he's working on something that and, and he was very forward was like, I'm tried getting to him to do this forever. A new action espionage game. Clearly what he means is another Metal Gear like a game. And mm -hmm. he announced it on the state of play. Very unlike, I think, recent PlayStation, I would add. Uh, they aren't like this, really. But this kind of feels like a change of how they're going to do things, because this kind of just... Like th these state of plays have been very poly. I want to, you know, if you, if you don't believe me, go back to other state of plays. This has been very unique on how they presented, how they transition. They they got away with the Nintendo Direct Square things that were moving like a fucking Netflix mm -hmm. video queue. Like we stopped all that. Thank God it helped the pacing quite a bit, and Absolutely. and they ended it with people kind of. They, you know, they they ended it with people. I, I think is is and they they sat on it, let them talk. And then ended it. I think that was very cool. Uncl you know, it, it seems like it's like, oh, this is the next game after Death Stranding 2. And I'm like, okay, so you have two games in production, which is cool. I'm curious on because that sounds like like if you're announcing it now and you're and you're saying I'll get to work on it. So it's not in pre-pro. So he's saying you're probably going to start pre-pro next year, next two years, three years. So we're talking like PS6, Xbox, whatever the fuck. Xbox two, X yeah, Xbox. We're in your fucking TV or we're a oh, satellite fuck, on series. A Xbox uh, World Series, anyway. <laughs> Xbox World Series. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what did you think about this? I, I mean, I think it was very cool. I don't know if you agree. Uh, the discussion about just you know, kind of casual discussion about the game, and then uh, Kojima clearly hinting at multiple things when it was ending. Hmm. I think. If you remember that tweet that got leaked before the state of play, kind of showing a lot of the stuff that yeah. got announced here, yeah. um, where it was very cryptic and whatnot, they mentioned Kojima's dream alongside Death Stranding 2 as a separate thing. I think whatever this new project is, this new espionage action thing, I think this is maybe Kojima trying to get the last bit of Metal Gear Solid type of gameplay ideas out of his system. At the same time, I think he's going to try and do something with film. He's already doing Death Stranding movie with A24. We know about that. The fact that they did that announcement and then zoomed out immediately, in Columbia Pictures. Zoomed out with Columbia Pictures and Sony Picture lot. Mm -hmm. I, I, I found that. Out, and it's not even like, oh, they're hinting. Like, they are telling you what's going on. So I maybe correct me if I'm wrong here. I'm imagining whatever this thing is. They've already greenlit a movie about it. Seemingly, right? Am I crazy with, with how I don't I'm think reading it's a movie. I think it's. I think it's going to no. be so filmic that it needs movie studios and movie oh, sets and whatnot. Oh, see, but I was I thinking think a game a and a film. film. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Well, honestly, I'm going to tell you what I have in my head. What I have in my head, I know this is like the quality is not what you expect from Kojima. Think The Quiet Man. If you remember The Quiet Man, okay. live action cuts. Yes. Yeah. And then they tried to have such high graphical fidelity that when it swapped into gameplay, it would kind of be seamless, it right? Would be seamless, yeah. I think we're at that level. To where if you tried to do that and you you made the game and the film with the intention of swapping between both of those, I mean Alan Wake Two just did it. I would, I, yeah, bro, man, yeah. <laughs> I think I think Kojima's trying to do some shit like that. I think this might be 
I'm not saying he literally played Alan Wake 2 and said, I'm going to do no, that. No, no. But, but I yeah. feel like he might have had things in his head and he played Alan Wake 2 and was like, maybe that idea is possible. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think this is going to be him combining his love of film and his love of games in a way more direct way than he's ever been able to do before. But it won't come out, like you said, for another. Yeah, no, we're, six we're, years. We're, we're talking about. Some of us are may, may die before this comes out. Let's be honest, and it's me, hey, absolutely, and it's me. Let's be, let's be. Real. I might have a child when this game's out. That, you like, know, that's actually a out. that's actually a strong point. I pr- I will probably have a kid by then. So like mm-hmm. that that's that is how far we're discussing. Like, yeah. um, I will say uh, to and he, I mean, Kojima hyped his fans up with this. He literally says, um. This this will be the culmination of my 30 years of game experience. That's wow. What I'm <laughs> like, he's gonna do, you he's are gonna being do something he's never done before. Yeah, yeah. He was like, you are telling people it was like, I'm putting the whole dick in it. I'm putting it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting it all in it. Do you understand? Like he's being very clear with what he's doing. Like I and I respect him. If there's one guy you would probably trust with a statement like that, it's 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 him. Because mm-hmm. you don't want fucking David Cage putting his whole anything in anything. Oh no 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 no! And the, we saw the losses. rumors he might have had done. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like I I don't know what he's up to. He's already doing stuff with OD with Jordan Peele. Yeah, he's already doing crazy stuff with Death Stranding too, even though it is a little bit more familiar. And he's already making an actual movie with A24. I don't know what this the man's fuck this busy. new project is, but it's going to be something crazy. It's going to combine all his loves into one. When he talks about it being an ultimate thing, I think it's going to be like, it won't literally be this, but it's going to be like thematically the Smash Brothers of Kojima, where everything he loves. Yeah, is here. yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Everyone is here. Everything. Mm-hmm. Your weird Metal Gear espionage, the the characters three yep. per people at once hold up, shit. you're gonna have to hold the dual shock up to the sun so that hunter yep. schaefer can move yes 100 <laughs> percent. yes yeah you'll have to spit on the do- di- like like the x button and it'll respond natively through facebook to then talk to the game like there's gonna be some weird ass shit yeah, yeah you're gonna burn down a, a, a konami building spelled <laughs> with a q yeah. <laughs> if you go to the Konami lot and burn it down, you will find the, the script <laughs> to a, a canceled game. No, uh, I will say um, I am happy we have, and I feel I've, you know I've said this before, but I am happy we have a Kojima. We have, and I feel like we can add Sam Lake to that after Alan Wake mm-hmm. Two. We have our our tours, our our high art people that we kind of look to to be like you know like tell you know tell us like how games can evolve in an art form specifically and. I'm very glad Kojima's still with us. I was kind of worried that he was pretty much telling us, he's like, I got a couple games and I'm going to go make movies. Fuck y'all. Like, he's clearly a movie guy. But I think it's clear that he w- wants to make movies and games. Not either or, and that makes me happy. I hope he doesn't leave us. Uh, I'm not a Metal Gear guy. I've never even played them. But I respect the man, and I always look forward to whatever weird shit he's got going on. Mm-hmm. I'll also say I'm very happy that he's one of our tours. I'm very happy that games even have all tours at this point. Yeah. Um, but I will point out, you know, oh, no. what we got Amy heading. We got what's yeah. her name from Ubisoft? Uh, uh, Assassin's Creed. Jade Raymond. Jade Raymond. Jade Raymond. I don't know if I but like I'm not trying. To I, you know what? You know what? I'll give you that because she might be more of a business. I'm not trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying to be mean, but I don't know if. We yeah, I, as far as like a creative visionary, yeah, yeah, yeah questionable yeah. on that. I'll give you that. But like the point I'm making is like, how many visionaries in the games industry yeah. do we have? We don't have a Spike Lee. We don't have no. a Jordan Peele. No, we, we don't, don't have a you know Quinta Brunson. We don't have an Ava DuVernay. We, we don't, don't have, have a guy in defeat. Yeah, we all know who, you went on who we're talking about. Yeah. We all know who I, I'm talking about. Guy in defeat. I don't you, know if Qu- I know Quentin Tarantino. He, he, oh, shit. He always, okay. Yeah, yeah. Guy Remember? in defeat. I thought you said meant guy in defeat. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, no. Okay. No, I'm, I'm reminded right. of the scene. I forget what movie it is, but he literally like ri- dire- directed it himself and made a woman shove oh, feet yeah. in his uh, face. The I'm like, movie. Yeah. all right, wow, wow. You're really. Yeah. This That's is still dawn. That's the one. Jesus. You're really yeah. telling us, huh? Anyways. Yep. Uh yeah, but yeah. We, we don't have yeah we, we we or we do but they're just very few and I'm glad we're we're seeing more and I'm glad 
they seem it seems to be working, even though Alan Wake doesn't seem to have maybe sold well, but we don't really know. But hey, forget what you sold. You made your money from Epic and the exclusivity and all that stuff. That's true. It will go down in history as one of the goats, whether or not it sells a million copies. That is so a good point. It will be a spec ops the line. Oh. <laughs> which which I it sucks because He's... that thing just got delisted because of music rights and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that's not the fate of Alan Wake, but it will go down in history in that same way where it might not sell a million copies, but it will launch a million minds into thinking about games in a more critical and interesting way. I'm a, I'm a fucking say it right now. I mean, I hope you stay with me on this tonight. Either whenever you listen to it, it doesn't have to be tonight as of one 31, 20, 20, 24, no, but tonight I want you to walk out. I want you to pour one out for spec ups. It's gone. <laughs> No one's going to play it anymore because it's gone from store services. So no new people will get to experience it. You have to fucking get the ROM off, off of off of whatever aid site that will penetrate your computer. I want you to pour. We all together, we're going to pour one out for Spec Ops, the line. We never got another one. We never got a spiritual successor, really. We never really saw anything from that. And it's just, it's sad, you know? Mm-hmm. It makes me sad. It is sad, but also what? what a sequel or well actually i don't right. mean spiritual a sequel successor. spiritual successor. yeah I, I i misspoke exactly. i misspoke no um, no you said spiritual successor that's absolutely what we should have got you're absolutely yes right. yeah, yeah yeah i don't want another i don't want to spec ops 2 it wouldn't make any fucking sense mm-hmm. <laughs> i want i want what who who got inspired you know like let's mm-hmm. let's, let's use that somewhere else but you know i digress um emmett what did you think of the whole state of play as we kind of close it out? Very quickly, um, I will say uh, they did announce at the end of this that in a week we will be getting a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth state of play. Uh, I don't know why there's a whole state of play to the game. I'm, that makes me I'm like, do I want to watch that? I'm going to play the game. So I, I don't know. I might not watch that. I, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe if there's demand that you guys are going to watch it, maybe I will. But I'm not. I don't mm. know why would I watch that. I'm going to buy the game. So... I mean, I'm not going to buy the game, but, you know, that's why I'm not watching it. Not yeah. because I hate it, but, you know, just not for me. Yeah, I, I play it. the first one. I'll probably like it. I'm playing the first one right now for the first time. It's, um, it barely really? holds up. I got to be honest. Oh, wait, you're playing the original Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm talking about the remake. I have not played the remake at all. <laughs> uh, You should, because I feel like you'd be into it. I think you would dig the combat system specifically, actually. Yeah, the game. I think I'd like it. I, I feel like I've, I'm confident I'd like it. I just don't know if I'd be into the characters and story. That's the thing oh, I'm like nervous about. No, I'll probably not. <laughs> Especially, uh, did you play Final Fantasy VII? Uh, I I haven't played a Final Fantasy game ever. The closest I've gotten is a couple hours of uh, Stranger Paradise and like the demo for Dissidia. That's all I've touched of that. No, 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 no. We're backing this up. So your first <laughs> Final Fantasy experience was this was PSP. Wait, so you played so you played Smash Brothers but played none of the games. I played the demo for the city of fuck ton. I didn't play the full game. So did that I. Was we my all first did experience with that. Yes. Yeah. But my first actual Final Fantasy game, yeah, absolutely. It was Stranger Paradise. Stranger of Paradise. Fucking what you, god damn it. What do you expect no, from me? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not mad that it happened. I'm mad that I'm surprised. You understand what I mean? Like I should not be so I should have been like, yeah. Your first one would have been Stranger of Paradise. That makes sense. Fucking Indeed. Jesus Christ, damn it! But um, yeah, no, I, I'm. Uh, for some reason, they they said it. They lied and said it was a remake. It's not. I mean, I guess it is a remake in a literal sense, but it's a completely different story. So I don't know what the fuck. Why didn't they just tell us that? If I was told, hey, don't play this, play Final Fantasy VII first, I would have done that. But it, that's not what you expect. So I'm playing Final Fantasy VII now to then play the remake to then play Rebirth. I have played the remake before, but. Uh, it's a full, full, full experience from start to to finish, and we'll see if I enjoy Final Fantasy VII. My God, it, it, Final Fantasy VII's. It, I wish at some point it just got the slightest graphical increase because it really is just fucking shapes walking around talking to each other, and it is hard <laughs> to really get into it. That's why I'm really reading it. Like I try not to. I like I'm reading the game and trying to focus on the dialogue, and it is great. Like the writing's great, but. Jesus, when Cloud walks up and he looks like two triangles taped with a fucking rectangle and this weird fucking prism as a head, mm, hard to get into it. Hard to get into it. Uh, made in dreams. <laughs> made in dreams. Hashtag made in dreams. Uh, what did you think of this state of play? 
we kind of got light, heavy thoughts, but as we got game by game, did your opinion change at all? What did you think about this as we close out the show? Um, honestly, not too. I, I don't think my opinion changed too much. I, I came in saying, okay, it was about a B plus. Yeah. I still think it's a B plus. Right. I might, if you push me, I might get a minus. You might get mm. an a minus out of me. But when I look at stuff like until dawn being completely unnecessary, uh, and then having reservations on the actual cool stuff like Judas, uh, and then all the familiar things like the Dave, the divers and the V risings. It's a lot of, everything here is good. Everything in here is good to someone. But to right. me, I'm only very excited for some of this stuff. And everything else didn't bore me, didn't disappoint me. But the maybe exception of that Silent Hill 2 remake gameplay, that looked a little fucking fucked. But, <laughs> you know, good stuff overall, I think. There's a lot of good food to eat here, even if I'm not getting a plate at every single pot. Right. I, I think that's well said. Um, I mean, I, if I have to really boil it down, I liked seven out of the, what, 15 games? Something like that? Uh, mm -hmm. that's good enough for me. I don't expect to like every game. Um, I think it was a, I think your B plus a minus is actually pretty much where I am. I think this was good. I think this was an a minus if we compare it at, as a state of play to everything else. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a B plus if we take it at face value and grade it as like a attempt at what it's trying to be. Um, and I, and I think they need to use this format going forward this way and not try to cram these down our throat. Uh, I think we need a showcase. I think we need to be told if there is a PlayStation this year or not, because I understand we have our third party exclusives. I understand we have our second party releases. We all know. I don't give a shit about that, though. I want to know, is there a PlayStation Studios title in my PlayStation this year? That's just and that and that unfortunately was not answered with this. So that is also a little bit of a dock points for me. Because I wanted to know, is there something I can be excited for on the PlayStation platform? There's hmm. about two or three, and that's only because they spent money to make it exclusive, or I would be playing it on my Xbox. Absolutely. Probably on Game Pass. <laughs> Probably on Game Pass for some of them, too, yeah. They blow their budget on Game Pass and not let it be profitable for another year. Oh, Emmett, I think that's all for you today. I want to thank you for donating your time to me today. Um. As always, where can we find you? We I think everyone knows by this time, but tell <laughs> tell them anyways, just in case. Uh, you can find me on uh, Blacklogged. No, I'm playing. Uh, Blacklogged.com. <laughs> it really whips the horse's ass. Wait, that's <laughs> what Anyway. Um, yeah, uh, EJ Spun 61 on any place in the internet. Uh, EJ Spun 61 on Twitter, of course. Uh, EJ Spun 61 on Blue Sky on backlogged on even mini clip or not mini clip what is it called mini map uh the other video game social media website that is a lot like backlogged um find me anywhere i'm doing stuff you can find me on welcome to the thing podcast we're doing that pretty regularly uh just about every other week on that one spoonful look we're both busy with life mm. we'll get some more spoonful it's just taking us a minute so mm. we got you we got you mm. uh same th same thing with vgu.tv we're, we're coming back for game of the year stuff soon just just give us a minute i'm 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 lifing a lot right now so i'm, a, I'm gonna get back into it but welcome to the thing we just put out a new episode of that so i, I was really happy with the episode too it's very funny so i got in a lot of good jokes and a lot of good discussions in general so go ahead and check that out Thank you so much, Emmett. Uh, remember, you like, comment, subscribe, share. You know what to do on the YouTubes. Uh, audio, five-star review, all these things. I want to thank everyone for donating your time today, listening to us. I think this was a great conversation. Uh, remember, regular scheduled content will be coming up slightly later to accommodate for the state of play. I'm not going to re release two videos on top of each other. It just kills it. So I'm going to extend it by a day longer than normal. This state of play will go live uh, pretty much as soon as this gets finished. You you obviously know when it's gone live because you're watching it. And Emmett, hopefully we can get you on back soon. These conversations are always great. Um, our dynamic is great. I think we're honestly two of the best, what do you want to call this, indie podcasters, gaming podcasters out there as a duo. I, -D -E -D -E I don't know. E -D -E -N -T, do you know what that means? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much. Remember, go Chief.